Okay, good morning everybody. Um, I wanted to make a smoothie for you so you could see how I make my smoothie every day. Now obviously it's different based on the season and what's available and what's around in my cupboard but um, or in my freezer. But um, this is just kind of generally how I do it. So um, I have usually one, just one banana, sometimes two. Um, I prefer fresh bananas. For some reason frozen bananas have a weird texture for me. Um, one banana, and today I'm using a bunch of peaches just because we happen to have them, um, and <clears throat> they weren't really that great to eat, so I'm hoping they'll be okay in a smoothie. It was just more the texture than the flavor, so um, put a bunch of them in, and um, usually I always put some kind of berries in, and um, usually I have some kind of frozen fruit, but these just happen to not be frozen. So if I don't have frozen fruit, I will add ice because I don't like it too um, lukewarm. So I'll do that in a minute. Um, chard. I always use um, chard because I have um, hypothyroid and there's certain um, like kale and um, spinach are not so good to have a lot of, of if you have thyroid issues. So chard is a good alternative. So I will actually take this stem part off um, because it makes it a little bit more charty and then you can just save this and juice it later. So I'll put all those in just in a minute. And <clears throat> I usually put some kind of hemp protein or hemp seeds in there. We're just out of pro hemp protein, so I'll put hemp seeds in today. Um, and some coconut oil. Um, somebody, when I used to just make like fruit and um, green smoothies, like sort of is the classic, um, I used to still get hungry. So someone recommended that I put like flax or some kind of protein powder in there, um, hemp, and coconut oil. And coconut oil is actually great. This is actually coconut butter, which I think is just a little less processed and I like the flavor better. Um, it, it's, um, Great because I was it has um, properties in it that are antiviral, so that helps me with my um, Epstein Barr virus. Um, and um, I was actually taking my naturopath prescribed a supplement, which is lauric acid, and then I found out that um, that is in coconut, so I don't need to take that supplement anymore. And this is probably better for you. Um, so I'll just put that. Okay, how many greens to put in? Um, it's really up to you when you're first starting out. You might not want to put too many in. Some people say they don't like green smoothies. Well, you should just put like maybe one or two leaves in at first. Um, since these are kind of small charred leaves, I'm going to put in like, um, I think it's going to end up being about six. But as you can see, that's really small. As If they're all like that, I might just put in like four. Um, and so... I usually break them up a little bit more. Shove that in. And lastly, this is totally optional. I don't always have it around, but um, I just happen to have these chlorella tablets because I um, wanted to get even more greens into my diet. I'm going to throw a few of those in. And if you're using berries and stuff, it just makes it even more green so you can feel like your smoothie's really green. I also like this vitamin mineral green. Um, there's also like Revitify or something. Like, I haven't tried that. Um, which I like because it has some of the grasses in there and kelp and stuff like that. Um, and so you just get even more greens. I just use about like a little, a little shake like that. Um, maybe about a tablespoon. And then the ice. And, um, as far as water, sometimes we use like fresh squeezed orange juice or... Um, hemp milk or something, but um, I think for this, and since especially since I have a banana in there, I think um, water is just fine. So if you have a blend tech, I usually just sort of fill it all up. And I like mine kind of thicker, so I'll usually just do, oh, that's sort of a lot of water compared to normal. That is a lot of water compared to normal. 
Um, usually I'll just do like about two or three cups, so I may pour a little bit of that out. And my Blendtec has a little smoothie preference thing on it, which I usually start with. Okay, so this is um, my final product. Um, you know, I'm always surprised at the color of it since it had a lot of peach. It's kind of um, light colored today. Um, you want to make sure if you, if you if you have a high speed blender that you blend it long enough um, because the especially if you use berries, the blueberries have um, uh, in the seeds they have oils that are really good for you that you want to make sure that you are breaking down. Um, I know some people like to chew stuff, but you don't want to be chewing on those seeds. You want those to be processed as much as possible so you can get the benefits of them. So um, I'm going to pour it. So I'm lucky enough to have these glass straws. Um, I'll try and put a link as to where you can get them. Um, they're really nice and easy to clean um, for your smoothie. And I'm also going to show you... Um, my dog really likes green smoothies, and so I try and make a pretty big one so there's enough left for him. And actually, the other dog likes it too, but sometimes she doesn't come down. So let's see if he wants to drink some right now. Zuki wants some smoothies. Your favorite peach. He really, really likes peaches. Bananas too. And he used to not like blueberries, but now he really does. So there he goes, drinking his um, morning green smoothie along with me. Um, he has some health conditions. He has a heart, um, heart uh, enlarged heart cardiomyopathy, and also a heart murmur. And he's on a lot of medications, and he has some kidney issues. So um, I'm encouraging him to drink green smoothies. He used to like green juices, but um, now he's more into the smoothies since he's he loves fruit. Um, so I'm hoping that will help his health as well. And so thanks for watching. And drink your green smoothies. Do you like your smoothie, Sienna? She doesn't know how to lick it off of her chin, so she'll get smoothie chin.